All right, so it's uh, the morning of day one. We did the driver's meeting, prepped the car a little bit, uh, had to get a can for the uh, overflow since we have the new expansion tank. We've put a tempor temporary one in there because uh, we want to see how it kind of reacts and where we want to put it. But that's going to hold in there and uh, should be good. We're going to go hot in about 45 minutes and uh, get our first session, go out, just do some recon laps, get re-familiarized with the tracks since we didn't drive yesterday. Uh, keep the car in one piece and uh, have some fun and see what we can do. Hopefully run in the low 20s. Uh, that would be the goal just to go out there. We're in group two since we, we've never been out here. So go there, be safe, have some fun. So it wouldn't be time attack without a little drama. I went out for the first session and uh, got about three quarters of the way through my outlap, felt the car cut out and I was like, oh, that can't be good. And about 10 seconds later, the whole thing died. Uh, the fuel pump relay failed. Christian's swapping it out right now. We were scrambling. We didn't think we had a spare one because it's a kind of a special one. Let's see, I think it's like a solid state style. Okay. So it's a little bit different than your typical relay. I don't know if you can see it there. But uh, the pins are different. We got lucky, we had one, and we're gonna test fire it right now.
So we just finished the second session. Uh, obviously, first session, nothing happened because we broke on the outlap. Uh, second session, went out and uh, started with the 223. Ended at 220. However, my driving was pretty bad on that. It was, you know, my second ever hot lap in this thing. And uh, I could definitely tell that there were a couple of errors I messed up. I also had a huge mistake into turn one where I basically locked it up and uh, ended up almost, I, I was about to stop uh, running the lap, like I was gonna just abort it and then do the next one. And then after a second or two, I was like, ah, screw it, I'm just gonna do it, you know, just get the data. And still did a 220 flat, so the car definitely has teens in it if I can get it together. So we go out for session three, uh, hopefully get re-familiarized with it. Then do session four, and then after that we're gonna change the tires. I have a fresh set of tires for tomorrow, and then try to shoot for a, a, a fast lap tomorrow morning. So we're bleeding the car right now, and then going to go ahead and start, or, and then I think it's launch and then session three. So it's day two, session one. Uh, we're getting the car ready. The engine is unfortunately hurt. I believe we've overheated it a few too many times and uh, it is starting to push coolant at an alarming rate. So we got a very big coolant catch can in there. Uh, so we're gonna go out with fresh tires and see if we can go any faster. Luckily, the engine seems to still be making around the same power. It's a little hurt, but not terribly. So we seem to be good there. And the real MVPs of the weekend have been Mr. Scott doing some pressures right now and Christian who has uh, basically helped me all weekend and done everything I've needed. So, thank you Christian, thank you Scott. I'm gonna go out and uh, hopefully we're in group one session one, or group one, so we go out last and uh, hopefully go out and have a good lap and break into the teens. Yeah, I love this thing. Good luck, man. Go fast. Thanks, Morning, morning. Good luck, boys. Go fast. Good luck, Jackie. Good luck, Chris. Go fast. So those two guys, Chris and Jackie, are going to be the competition. They are hauling ass today. And uh, it's a fresh session. Probably going to go real fast. All right, so we're obviously not at Coda. We're back at the shop, and it is long past Coda. And the reason for that is I pulled all the memory cards to review footage the night after day one. And I wanted to see you know, where I could improve for day two, and forgot to put the memory cards back in. And uh, to be honest, you're not missing out on much because my day one or my day two session one lasted about 30 seconds. And the reason for that is uh, when I went out on the warm up lap, I went to warm up the tires and the car snapped. And uh, when it did, it uh, went off track and locked the wheel into the fender. And the reason for that is that part of what makes this car so quick uh, on track is that I've had to make it a little bit treacherous when the tires are cold or if you are not giving it exactly what it wants. And the reason for that is that I wanted to make it as quick as I could in the mid corner. And in order to do so, uh, I basically had to make the car very oversteery. And when it's like that, if the tires are cold or let's say you're unloading the car when you're not at 100%, uh, the car becomes almost unpredictable. And it's one of those things where when you're out on an outlap or an inlap, uh, you don't really think about load and you're not really, like it's out of your mind about being absolutely on the limit for car control. 
So I went out and was probably doing like 75 miles per hour, like nothing going into the S's, and I was swerving to warm up the tires and went right. As soon as I snapped it left, the car just kept going, and it was because I was off throttle uh, getting ready for the S, and being off throttle all the way transferred forward, spun the car, and when that happened, um, it's a little bit tough to catch these cars when they spin. That's why they were kind of notorious for being crashed by journalists. And the reason for that is uh, they are manual steering, and then they have a very, uh, like a 20 to one steering ratio, which makes it kind of like a school bus. And they did that so that that way the car would be very easy to drive with manual steering. Unfortunately, it makes it very hard to catch if the car goes sideways. On top of that, I don't have very much steering angle because the front tires are so much larger than stock and the overall diameter is so much larger than stock that you basically get uh, like three quarters of a turn each direction. And at that point, the tire hits the body and it will not turn anymore. And that's kind of what happened to me. And the issue was the surface coda is so grippy that it actually pulled the tire past the pinch weld and locked the tire past the pinch weld where it was hitting the body. So. If you watch the live stream, you saw that the car got dragged onto the truck. And the reason for that was because we couldn't get the wheel to go straight so I could turn. So they dragged it up on the truck. And then when we tried to get it off the truck, it obviously didn't want to come off. So we had to deflate the tire, pull the wheel off, recenter it, and then get it back to the point where uh, we could just roll the car off and drive it. Uh, you know, it was totally my fault. I'm not gonna try to blame it on anything else or the car being hard to drive. I've driven this thing long enough, I should know better. And like, how silly is it to spin on the outlap? But things happen and unfortunately it ruined our day. We also were battling that head gasket issue, which is why we were, I mentioned bleeding the car a few times. Uh, we blew the head gasket on day one, session one, I would assume, or session two. And it sucks because I had seen kind of signs of it, which is why we tested at Willow Springs. It was the main reason. I wanted to go to somewhere with a long straightaway where I could be full throttle for a long period of time and see if the coolant pressures got crazy, which they didn't. However, at Coda, with the straightaways being what they are, the back straight at this power level, I'm still full throttle for 17 seconds. And we're doing above 160 on the back straight to give you an idea of how fast that place is. So I think with all of that, it just lifted the heads and unfortunately uh, caused the issue that we had. So on top of that, day one, session one, or session two, as you saw, we did a 220.0 and that was me just reconning the lap. And then from there, uh, I wanted to kind of piece it together, so I drove the track in sections and would drove two more 220s, basically piecing it together. And the goal was to go out session two, uh, or day two, session one, and really push with a good temperature and fresh tires. So unfortunately, my mistake uh, also cost me what would have been the good lap of the weekend and uh, anything that we would have had to try and win. But unfortunately, it didn't work out. Our 220.0 was good enough for second place, which, uh, Obviously, we always go for the record in first place, but uh, not a bad way to finish considering how we didn't really get a representative lap. And everyone that was out there was awesome. Uh, all of the drivers in street class did a killer job. And we're looking forward to next year with a heck of a lot more updates and now steering rack limiters so that doesn't happen again. And yeah, so I guess for the rest of the vlog, it'll just be, I think, how the day ended and a pit walk. So thanks for watching. This is probably one of my favorite cars from the event. Cable's sequential, pile activated. No shift to there. Uh, Viper, probably the best sounding car of the event as well. If you've watched before, you know I'm a sucker for GC8s. The super nice boys from Colorado, I believe it is, with their very fast Evo 10. I love this car. Oh, it's so cool, black chrome. Absolutely love it. And then we've got Devin's STI. How's it going? Was your lap good? Yeah, thank you. No problem. Hopefully it helped. Yeah, <laughs> Did you go? I only got black lines or something different. Oh, nice. I saw you went faster. Right. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Dan Kroll is very cool STI. This thing is built pretty well. How oh, funny. They must have 3D scanned it because there's still a lot of the powder left. You're good, man. Don't worry. This car is uh, 
very well built and beautiful. All the good go fast parts, sequential. Ooh, Samsonis, that's what's up. Motec Dash, all the good stuff. You want this one, Scott? <laughs> maybe, maybe, who knows. Uh, window shopping. Yeah, exactly. Then Life went out and did a 206, which is friggin' unreal. Reset their own record. It was awesome to see this thing out there. Excuse me? Again, all the good bits. The reported horsepower level in the four figures. Common for GTR. One of my personal favorites. What do you think, Scott? This, this is the one? This is the business. <laughs> street car? Right here. Yeah, street car, race car? Got Justin Bayless's Miata Golf S2000. What's that? Supercharged. Supercharged. So, Chris, we've looked at this car a little bit, but. Where's he at? Want to ask him? Yeah. Let's find him. I want to take a LS3 powered RS? It's a uh, dry sump. Oh, damn, it's dry sump too? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Check it out. Where's the tank? Is it in the car? Uh, tank is probably back there, I would guess, based on these gigantic lines and that box. He's responsible and actually sealed his dry sump tank, not like us in the M3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a guy. Dry sump tank. How are you going to see all the horsepower sweat? <laughs> <laughs> seal it Ooh, Porsche overalls. Give me some of those. Brandon Luthi, one of the nicest guys you'll meet. He met him at Road Atlanta last year. There's tons of these focuses here today. There's this broken hunk of junk. <laughs> McLaren 620R. Dealer plates. <laughs> yeah, dealer plates. What a guy. Nick Spoon car. Super tight USTI. This thing is cool. Actual super techie car. Focus. This thing's rad. I'm usually not a super guy, but I know, right? That one wins us over. Had gaskets for that car. <laughs> Very crazy eclipse. Want to see a DSM out here? TLTC cars in there. Lambo doors on the CF. Yeah. I saw that the ITB setup. The man after my own heart. <laughs> I know, right? From one ITB D series to another. 